CATV is proudly presented by Toyota. Well, Ian Ward, a lot of talk before this match about the fast bowlers here at the WACA, but interestingly, Graham Swan taking two wickets. Yes, and there was a lot of talk that Swan might not play, and England would just go in with, say, five seamers, and if they did need to bowl some spin, go with Joe Root. So I think credit to the England management and the selectors to keep him in the side, and then for Alistair Cook to bowl him just before lunch. Obviously, Australia in this series are targeted Swan and they try to put him under pressure. And I think they have tried to do that, but perhaps have just gone a little bit over the top. Been a few reckless shots, you'd have to say, from Australia. They'll probably look at that and think, did we need to push that hard? Yes, Australia lost uh, three wickets, you'd say, fairly cheaply. Mm. What did you make of those dismissals? Well, I love the way Darren Lehman has set up this side and the way Michael Clark is encouraging the players to play aggressively. That's great. However, it just looks at times a little reckless. Now, maybe that's because the beans are jumping a little bit because they're tuning up in the ashes and a win here actually seals the ashes or it's the nature of the pitch. But it just seemed a little bit frenetic. Whereas in the previous two games, Australia seemed to be quite calm and played the right shot at the right time. It just looked a little bit too rushed. And I think that's played into England's hands a little bit. Yeah, so um, also, obviously, Michael Clark and Alistair Cook playing a, a, their 100th game and, and Michael Clark being caught out by mm. Alistair Cook. He would have been disappointed not to make a big score today. Yeah, I mean, you look at someone like Ricky Ponting who went 100-100, or Alex Stewart who scored 100 on his 100th test match. You can't always write the script like that. Good bit of bowling from Swan and Clark looking to be aggressive. It's a serious achievement for both of those guys to play 100 test matches. Alistair Cook, the youngest player to ever do that. Um, and there's plenty more cricket in them to come as well, I think. Now, day one here, we've seen the, the morning session has been really hot, an absolute scorcher, brutal conditions. What, what sort of toll must this take on those players? You'll find out come the end of the day, there'll be some very, very hot bowlers, some very, very hot people in the crowd as well. I've seen a few people just carted off in ambulances, probably a little bit dehydrated. But these guys are very fit and they work extremely hard, both Australia and England. But, you know, the England bowlers being out in 42, 43 in the middle, it does take its toll. And I suppose it's... It's not so much just about getting through the day, it's how you come back on day two. So that's when all the support staff will stick them in ice baths and rehydrate. But that is as brutal as it gets, really. I mean, you've got the, the sheer heat here at Perth, 42, 43 in the middle. Then somewhere like Colombo, where it might be 36 degrees, but the humidity. Those are the toughest conditions you get as a cricketer.